Hi everyone, my name is Julie. Today we're traveling to a country that I'm sure most of you have heard about. One of the top tourist destinations, a tropical paradise, Thailand. We see so many images of this country, we hear so many rumors about its customs. But what do we actually know about its language? Swadika. Let's talk about the Thai. The Thai is the official language of Thailand, a country located in the heart of Southeast Asia. One interesting thing about this region is the diversity of different language groups that co-inhabit this chunk of land. We find the representative of the Sino-Tibetan group with the Burmese, the Austroasiatic group with the Khmer and Vietnamese, the Austronesian group with the Malay and Indonesian, plus the pockets of the Hmong languages that nobody actually knows which family they belong to. And right in the middle, we have the Thai Kadai languages, which are completely unrelated, or at least there is no proven relationship to the surrounding languages. So how did the Thai end up where it is today? Let's dive into the history to find it out. The origin of the Thai Kadai or the Kra Dai languages is supposedly somewhere around southern China. Around 1000 AD, the ancestors of the Thai Kadai people began mass migration to the south, occupying the territory they live in now, replacing mostly Austroasiatic speaking populations. As it was already mentioned, the Thai Kadai languages are a completely distinct language family, although linguists have tried to link them to other groups. For instance, some claim connection with the Austronesian language family. Other researchers, mostly Chinese, consider the Thai Kadai languages to be part of the Sino-Tibetan language family. Some connect them to the Hmong languages and some even to Japanese. Also, there is a proposed Austric macro family, which supposedly would connect all of the Southeast Asian languages, except the Burmese, in this kind of a family tree. Today, the Thai Kadai languages are spread all over the region, from Southeast China to Northern India. The biggest representatives being the Lao, the official language of the country Lao, and the Thai itself. It has to be noted that there are other Thai Kadai languages spoken in Thailand. Some of them have quite a few native speakers. The most important are the Southern Thai, spoken by 5 million people, the Northern Thai, spoken by 6 million people, and the Isan, which is essentially a variety of Lao, spoken roughly by 20 million people. The official Thai language is based on the Central Thai and has also around 20 million native speakers all these different Thai Kadai languages are pretty much more or less mutually intelligible because their separation was pretty recent. So some even don't consider them to be separate languages, but rather dialects. So it means that we have Thailand with its 65 million population and nearly all of them can speak and understand the official Thai. And how do they speak it? Let's explore the pronunciation. To begin with, Thai has an alphabet containing 44 letters. It was inspired by the Khmer alphabet, which itself derived from the ancient Palava alphabet. All these 44 letters are consonants, because the Thai alphabet is an abugida. Abugida means that the vowels don't have their own letters, they are represented as complementary symbols to the consonants. These symbols can be found on top, above, and on the both sides of the consonant. There are 18 vowels, 9 vowel sounds, and a longer version of each sound. The 44 consonants of the Thai represent only 21 sounds. That means that there are letters that stand for the same sound. For that reason, every letter of the Thai alphabet has its own name which corresponds to a word where this letter can be found. Some sounds are clearly overrepresented. For example, this sound ka has five letters, even though two of them are not used anymore. And this sound ta has six different letters. The Thai alphabet was created in 1283, and since then few changes to the writing system have been made. That means that a Thai person today could read an ancient text of the 13th century without any inconvenience. 
but that also means that the pronunciation has changed drastically while the writing didn't follow, which resulted in the not-so-obvious reading rules. Because depending on which letter TA you use, you would read the tone of the following vowel differently. And now we've touched on another difficult subject of the Thai language, the tones. Thai is a tonal language, which means intonation matters. And when you say my and my, you say two completely different things. There are five tones, the low tone, the falling tone, the high tone, the rising tone and the mid tone. You cannot underestimate the importance of the tones because, for example, instead of saying ka chop ki ma, which is he likes to ride a horse, you can accidentally say ka chop ki ma, which is he likes dog shit. And that kind of mistake would be at least a little awkward. So let's hear how these tones sound when pronounced by the native speakers. สมัครตำแหน่งพัฒนาชุมชนยั่งยืนนะครับไหนลองบอกเหตุผลซิว่าทำไมผมถึงต้องรับคุณเข้าทำงานจริงๆวันนี้คนที่ขึ้นเวทีนี้จะเป็นคนที่มีความเชี่ยวชาญในเรื่องต่างๆเป็นคนเอ็กซ์เพรสแต่เรื่องความรักไม่มีใครเชี่ยวชาญค่ะเรื่องเทคนิคการสัมภาษณ์งานการตอบคำถามในการสัมภาษณ์งานมีคนอื่นพูดเยอะแล้วฉะนั้นวันนี้เราจะมาดูเรื่อง mindset ในการสัมภาษณ์งานค่ะ Okay so now let's go back to the consonants and let's try to determine how do we read the Thai word All of the consonants are divided into three classes high mid and low Each has a set of rules for reading Then you see the tone marker There are four in total One for each tone the mid tone doesn't have a tone marker And that seems straightforward, but even here the Thai didn't want to make it too easy for us. For example, there is this low tone marker, which corresponds to a low tone, but in combination with the lower class consonant, it actually gives you a falling tone. So if there is no tone marker, we look at the end of the syllable. If it ends with a long vowel or with a sonorant consonant, it is considered to be a live syllable. In all the other cases, it is a dead syllable. So, as you have probably guessed, the nature of the syllable determines the tone again. And a quick recap: in order to read Ta, you should know the classes of the consonants, the tone markers, the dead or live syllables, and only then you can hope to read the Ta word correctly. And to finally move on to the grammar section. And now the good news: Thai learners must suffer so much with the reading and pronunciation that the Thai has a reward for them. The grammar is easy. There are no inflections, no tenses, no gender, no number, nothing. The word order is SVO, and it's actually very strict because it conveys the meaning. Let's see this example sentence: My friend likes Thai cinema a lot. Pian Chan chop do nan Thai mak. So the first one is the subject, my friend, which here literally translates as friend I, because in Thai adjectives or a descriptive word always goes after the main word. Then love watch the verb, then the object cinema Thai, and in the end the adverb a lot. The spaces are used in order to separate phrases and sentences. So when looking at a Thai text, you won't see any points or commas, and rarely any exclamation or question marks. In order to express question or exclamation, a Thai uses the particles that they put at the end of a sentence. There are actually tons of them. Some are used to emphasize the phrase. Some for a request. Some for a soft request. Some indicate the degree of politeness of the whole speech. And now it's about time to move on to the. Vocabulary section. In Thai, it is very important to choose the words that corresponds to the social situation. There are several registers that are like mini languages inside a language. It can be also found in English, with the differences between colloquial and formal language. But the Thai, in addition to these two, has also a rhetorical Thai used for public speaking, a religious Thai. Used when discussing Buddhism or addressing monks, and the royal Thai used when addressing or talking about the royal family. 
in each register, the words you use will vary greatly. Just look at these different versions of the word to eat. Even addressing ordinary people in Thailand is not that obvious. Thai people don't usually use their real names in everyday lives, but rather a nickname. The name is usually long and difficult to pronounce and is only used in the official paperwork. The nickname, however, is given at birth and it often has a meaning. Some are innocent, but others are quite unusual to say the least. And we're going to see those ones, of course. For example, these common nicknames mean fat, pig, Chinese noodles, and it has become very trendy to name a child after a foreign word because it sounds cool or because the parents like the meaning. For instance, a popular male nickname is Bang and a popular female nickname is Bonus. There are people named Beer, Jackpot, iPhone, Vegas, King Kong. Basically, anything can become a nickname. Thai people can become very creative when adopting the foreign words and they're not afraid to use them. Actually, if we look at the Thai language, we see that around half of its vocabulary is borrowed. Foreign words are mostly of Khmer, Chinese, Sanskrit, or recently English origin. But for example, when speaking Royal Thai, you would use more words of the Khmer origin, and when speaking religious Thai, the vocabulary will be more of the Sanskrit origin. And be ready that when Thai people greet you, they will not only ask you how you are doing, but also where you have been and, most importantly, if you have eaten yet. What does this say us about the Thai culture? Yes, food is a big deal there. Remember those seven words for the word to eat? But, well, this is yet another story. So, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you liked this video. And if you love languages, if you would like to see more of these videos, please subscribe, that motivates me a lot. What else motivates me? Your comments. So please don't hesitate to comment. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!